I'm Matt Strackfine. I make a comic called The Longmont Kid, and I want to do a demo to show you how I make the comic. So I do a lot of um, Comic Cons and you know, I, I'll draw in public and I'm, I'm also an instructor and I teach how to make comics and people are always asking me where I get my ideas from. But instead of talking about where the ideas come from, I like to put an emphasis on my process and talk about what I, what I intend to do with the idea, um, whatever it may be. Uh, in the case of the Longmont Kid, I wanted to do a comic strip about Longmont, but um, you know, I had to decide is it going to be a digital comic, a comic in print, is it going to be uh, both? And I've always wanted to do a comic strip that was uh, like in the tradition of the old Sunday newspapers, where it was full page and full color, and that way you can tell one whole story in a single page. The top of the page is the beginning, the middle is literally the middle of the story, the bottom of the page is the end of the story. So if I was collaborating, I would literally type out a script, but in this case, I just jot down some notes for myself where I break down the panels so I know how many panels they are and what the arrangement's gonna be. And then I plot out the action over here and then I figure out about how much room I have in each panel for the lettering or word balloons or caption boxes. Um, comics are very much the juxtaposition of words and images, so two elements coming together to, t to convey a single idea. The Longmont Kid is based on a Halloween costume I came up with, which is a uh, uh, jacket I bought in a vintage store and somebody said, who are you supposed to be? And I said, the Longmont Kid, because the jacket says Longmont on the back. Um, and so, you know, when I did the comic, I wanted it to be kind of like the Longmont Kid is Longmont's mascot, uh, but also feature different things about Longmont. So this one is a comic that has to do with Long's Peak Pub, which is a mountain sun brewery in Longmont. And you can see that this is what I call the roughs. So here we have some very loose drawing um, my style is fairly simple and cartoonish, so this is pretty close to what it'll eventually end up being. But you got to start out with um, something that you're allowed to be sloppy with. You can make mistakes, you can start over if you have to. And most importantly, you want to make sure you have room for all of the, the dialogue, like I was saying. So, like for instance here, I have plenty of room for some word balloons, probably a couple of different word balloons. Make sure I have ample space. Also at this stage, you know which um, parts of the art are gonna get covered up eventually by words. So you can change that if you want. And the thing to note is the further along in your process, the harder it is to make changes. So you wanna just make sure that you have all that stuff figured out ahead of time. I do it in a very light pencil because I'm going to trace over this with better pencils and have more um, final lines and I'll do that again with ink. So you can see here, still have plenty of room for word balloons. Make sure those are big enough for a few lines of dialogue. You always want to know about how much space you have. And then I would move on to the next stage and then we could do some actual drawing. So when I start putting down the final pencils, I use two different pencils. One is a lighter weight for the backgrounds and then one is a heavier pencil lead, which I come back over for all of the outlines. And that helps the artwork stand out in the foreground um, when, it's, when it's more important or more crucial to the story. Um, so for instance, you can see here I've got a thicker outline around the main character because I want that to pop out from the background. In a single page, I don't worry too much about a whole lot of solid black areas. I feel like that's a waste of space, but I do fill in some of these areas because I want to make sure that I have ample contrast. 
Um, sometimes when a black area is too detailed, I'll just put a bunch of X's in place so that I know when I'm inking later to fill that in black. So then what I like to do is go over the roughs with more final design lines. And like I said, the original roughs that I laid down are pretty close to what I want because my style is fairly simple. Not too complex, not too detailed. But this is where you start to put down more of a final line. By the end of the story here, which is fairly anecdotal, the Longmont kid ends up kind of beat up too. So what I'm trying to do is um, draw him in a way that it becomes immediately obvious that he's gotten sort of beat up. And when it comes to the story, it's important to keep in mind that just like when you're telling a joke, you want the punchline to land. So it's important to keep in mind with a quick story like this that some of the information happens between panels or like off camera. And so in this, there's a, there's a dilemma that's introduced at the beginning. The Longmont kid has a solution to solve the dilemma and then we skip all this action where apparently he got real beat up and we just cut right to the end and show the aftermath which I thought was kind of funny because in a comic book it's easy to get away with that sort of that sort of gimmick where you let things happen between the panels And so one of the last things you see is him rappelling down from a helicopter, which, which is part of the story at that point. And he says, uh, hey, wait a minute, is this a rope or a bungee cord? And then it just cuts back to him at the bar having a beer. He's obviously saved the day, if you follow the story, but he's all beat up. These are sort of traditional hash marks you can make to show when somebody's been roughed up a little bit. Jacket got torn. And it's okay because in the very next comic, his jacket will be back to normal. And you just ask the reader to sort of suspend their disbelief. Maybe he got it patched up or something. Still got some dust or smoke coming off him, some debris. So February at Long's Peak Pub is Stout Month. And that's when this story takes place. And what happened was they ran out of beer, they ran out of stout beer right at the busiest time of the month. And the Longmont kid volunteers to go save the day. It turns out the, the next delivery truck was stuck out on 119 on the diagonal during rush hour, which is something that's quite common. I know some, sometimes when I draw things like uh, buildings or a cityscape that's real involved in detail, I'll use a ruler. But for the most part, I want my lines to feel natural. I want it to look like it was done by hand. Even when I draw digitally, I don't use the different tips and tricks to keep things perfectly straight. I want it to look like it was my hand that did the lines, or else it might look like anybody could have drawn it. It's good to have, you know, personal style 
as much as it is to have a unique perspective when you're, you know, telling a story. You can see I started out by drawing the foreground and then moved to the background because the most important information is what's in the foreground in this case. I have the basic lines down, I'll go back with a heavier pencil over top of the outline just to make sure it pops. Normally I would have a lot of solid black areas on artwork, but if it's just a single page, I like to keep it pretty simple and engage the reader's eye as soon as possible so that they know they right where to look. Otherwise, large black areas might draw too much attention away from the, um, the, the story and uh, the flow of the comic, which is top to bottom, left to right, just like you're reading a book. I don't want them to look ahead too quickly. And this guy is an actual employee. There's a few actual employees of the Longs Peak Pub that are included. And so I used a photo reference for him, which just means I looked at a picture. Although, when I draw people in a comic, basically doing the cartoon version of them. It's, it's nothing like doing a portrait. This is their cartoon version. So you can see this guy will have an all black shirt on, but I want to show some highlights around the edges so I've drawn where I want the highlight to be. So this will all be filled in black, and these will just be like highlights around the edges. It's basically so okay if it isn't perfect at this stage because when it gets inked you'll have a chance to make everything just right. And one thing I always tell people just starting out is I don't know anyone who can just sit down and draw a whole comic page perfectly. You have to have stages. If you want to be a comic book maker and do it for a living, it's basically commercial art. And commercial art means that you're going to have deadlines and you need a process to stay organized. So if you 
focus on your process, having the outline, the roughs, the pencils, and the inks, you'll learn how to work faster and more efficiently. And so give yourself a break and start out by just doing loose, loose drawings. That's called the roughs. And then finalize it as you go along. <clears throat> so then when, when you're inking, I like to um, start top to bottom so that my hand isn't going back over the ink because it'll smudge. Uh, it dries pretty quickly, these pens that I use, but um, nevertheless, it'll smudge. So I always like to start at the top and work my way down. And just like with the pencils, I have two kinds of ink that I use, or two kinds of pens. One is a finer tip for the background lines, and then one is uh, heavier for the foreground so I can outline the character in the foreground and he really stands out. Coloring the comic will help that too but um, you still want your foreground elements to pop as much as possible. So the first thing I'll do is the thick line on the outline and then I'll go back in and fill in the details. So just going right over the pencils. And this is basically your last shot to get the lines just right. It's harder, messier to clean things up after this. Uh, you'll have to get it on the computer to do that usually. Which is where it ends up anyway, so that's not the end of the world, but I like to take my time in this stage and the pencils are the kind of thing that probably won't show up when I scan this in onto the computer um, but you can adjust the contrast on, on the computer anyway just in case so then I'll switch after I get the outline I'll switch over to the lighter thinner tip pen, finish everything on the inside, and it's the same pen I'll use for the background, although some artists like to use a variety of pens, and that'll give you different dynamics along the way. that I have the style I have I, I'll switch my personal style up a little depending on if I'm drawing a cover art or a book illustration or a t-shirt design but when it comes to this comic I like to keep it simple and so you can see I'm just putting down very basic lines it's really just where the lines end up that make the composition switch over to a third pen which is a brush pen which makes it a lot easier and quicker to fill in 
large areas black. As you can see how the highlight that I already built in is in place. Also makes things go quicker. Sometimes it's a little weird to draw highlight or empty space. But if you do it enough, you get the hang of it. I like to keep in mind a, a expression or a phrase that I heard from Charles Schultz, the guy who invented Peanuts, the comic strip. And that's cartooning is drawing the same thing every day differently. So there are little tips and tricks that you pick up along the way that you incorporate into your process and make things go faster. But it's also fun to just kind of let things happen naturally and let the pen decide what things are going to look like. The Longmont Kid is a passion project of mine. It's something I do on the side just for myself. I like to draw this character a lot. I like to make these comics a lot because they're short and sweet. They're right to the point. I've done other full length comics that are 22, 24 pages. But in the time it takes to make one of those, I feel like I'm always sitting on an incomplete project. I like these single stories because you can bang them out pretty quickly. And then if I want to, I can put them straight online. Since they're a page each, by the time I have, say, 20 of these or 22 of these done, I can make them into a book.
that's it for the inking stage. So then I like to scan in the artwork, go around and clean it up, maybe even add a few more little details here and there, uh, like how I put the I Love Stout Month t-shirt design on the characters. And then you start coloring. And you do that in stages, just like when you draw. You start out by making selections, which I'll just show you quickly. These are going to be the same color. And this is called laying down the flats, where you use just solid colors. There's no shading or anything like that. And you do it in a way that won't probably won't look like the final colors. You actually want them you actually want them to look a little different than the final colors because what you're essentially doing is making selections. And you'll be able to use those selections later on when you fill in all the shading. And like I said, I don't have a lot of solid black areas, so I tend to keep things... Um, I, I let the color do a lot of work. I, I use a lot of shading on the computer. And that helps increase contrast. So there's a whole bunch of different ways to make selections, but you basically go all the way down the page. Um, doing, I, I like to start with the larger areas first and then move to smaller areas. And then you end up eventually with the entire page colored. Um, Again, these are pretty close to the final colors, but not not correct. Um, I want to be able to make selections easily without picking up the wrong part of the artwork. So when I grab the yellow of the helicopter, it's easy enough for me to just change that tone if I want make it a little bit more muted or maybe even more saturated and then after a while you can go in and start shading and adding detail like clouds or the shading in this piece of artwork up here you start to shade the characters a little bit more One of the ways I like to do that is by first using a brush with a lower opacity to build in highlights. And it's real easy to make changes at this stage too because it's on the computer. You can always just hit undo and start over again. So then after I have the initial highlight, I'll go back with an airbrush start fading things in and out and shading and this way it's a little bit less stark and just slightly softer and slightly more realistic Although, like I said, my style is to keep things pretty cartoony. So I don't want it to be too realistic. And 
And then when you get the final colors and everything's shaded and just right, and you've gone back and made adjustments here and there um, based on your light source or whether or not the character is indoors or outdoors, uh, and you've got everything just right, then you start adding all of the lettering, which we made sure that we had the perfect amount of room for at the very first stage in the initial outline. And we still have plenty of room. Everything worked out and it's not cluttered. Um, the comic is legible and coherent. You start at the top, go left to right, and work your way down. Then get the last little bit of lettering just in the right place. You can move this around till it looks just right. I do everything at 11 by 17. So if it's reduced in size, it's still legible. And nothing ends up too small. And that is the final comic for the Longmont Kid in Stout Month featuring Long's Peak Pub by Matt Strachmeyer. Thank you.